me tell you how much I've come to hate you since I began to live. Hello, and welcome to the second episode of the 16-Bit Thief podcast. I am your host, Jake Melvin. On today's episode, I will be covering I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, a cult classic adventure game released by Cyber Dreams in 1995 based off the short story of the same name by Harlan Ellison. I reached out to lead producer David Mullick in order to ask him a few questions about the game's development, and he was willing to answer them. I remember back when YouTube was still new at the time, circa 2006, a user by the name of Vlafor had uploaded the ending to this game entitled, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. I watched the ending and was enraptured by it. It was dark, macabre, depressing, and yet it was still interesting to watch. I did my research on the game and found that Harlan Ellison, who was a noted contemporary fiction author, was the lead writer of the short story it was based off of. Uh, I originally said that what I want the game to be is not a shoot 'em up an, an arcade kind of thing. What I wanted was a game that taught ethics. For many years, I wanted to obtain a legal copy of the game, but was unable to do so as the rights had long since lapsed into limbo. However, the game still fascinated me due to the way that it handled subject matters in mature ways. I always wanted to learn more about the development of the game, and while the 2012 Game Informer article did give me some insight on the development, it unfortunately left some things to be desired. I got in contact with producer David Mullick and decided to ask him a few questions about the game's development. Hopefully, I will finally find answers to my burning questions. Which of you five would like to play my little game? Hi there, Jake. Well, uh, you uh, you got me into this uh, discussion because I was a producer at Cyber Dreams. Actually, my title was development director, and I uh, headed up development of I Have No Mouth and I'm a Scream with Harlan Ellison. And I also worked on uh, on uh, Dark Sea 2 with H.R. Giger and a few other projects. Uh, during my four years at Cyber Dreams. Hate! What was the decision to use the Saga engine over the Scum engine? Did Harlan Ellison have a say in which specific one he wanted to use for the game? Harlan had nothing to, knew nothing about game development. He knew nothing about video games. He knew nothing about technology. Uh, he did not have any say over the technology that was used. The Scum engine is a proprietary engine developed by... Uh, by uh, LucasArts. They used it in Maniac um, Mansion, right? Right, Maniac Mansion. In fact, all of their interactive uh, uh, adventure games. Uh, so uh, so uh, we certainly didn't have access to the Scum Engine. Uh, when uh, when I was uh, choosing uh, developers to work on I Have No Mouth and a Scream, I chose uh, a company called right. Dreamers Guild. Right. And I knew about them because uh, the the founder of the Dreamers Guild, uh, Robert McNally, was a uh, was a ten years prior was a kid at the time a high school student who uh, who visited the uh, computer store that I worked in while I was going to college, and so that's how I first met him. Well, I later, when looking for developers, I I, I kept track of his uh, of his own work, and uh, I, I was familiar with a game that they did called. Uh, Dreamers Guild did called Fairy Tale Adventure, and the engine that they developed for that game was called the Saga Engine, and I thought that was that was just perfect for using with I Have No Mouth and I'm a Scream. So when I contracted them to do the programming and artwork for the game, they naturally you know, use their own proprietary engine. Rumors have existed for years that there was a PlayStation port being worked on, but was quietly canceled. Do you know how far it made it into development, if it made it into development at all? I had completely forgotten about, about PlayStation, and my memory on it is hazy, but to the best of my recollection, nothing was done with regard to a PlayStation port. I could be wrong, but uh, I, I don't remember any, any work being done on it. The British TV series Games Master had a gore special in which they covered violent video games, and an early build of I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream showed up on there. This included scenes not seen in the final product, such as Gorster feeding the heart to a Jack Terrier and Benny eating a baby. Do you know what happened to these scenes and why they were removed, and if they still exist in some form? We we decided to cut those scenes because we thought they were too graphic. And at the at the time, there was there was a uh, there was a lot of discussion going on about video games being too violent. And uh, if if my my timeline is correct, we were developing that about the same time that Mortal Kombat came out. And while we didn't mind doing things that were controversial, uh, we thought some of those scenes were 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 unnecessarily graphic, and we chose not to include them. Uh, I don't know what happened with with any of the uh, assets since then. 
After I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, were there ever any plans to adapt another science fiction work, like, say, Joe Haldeman or maybe Philip K. Dick? Well, um, we, we, uh, we, we were working on a number of different ideas. After, uh, after doing uh, uh, I Have No Mouth and Must Scream and Dark Sea 2 mm-hmm. and Noir, but uh, unfortunately the, uh, the owner of the company... Uh, was making much more money from his other companies and decided to shut down CyberDream, so we never really had a chance to uh, to develop any products beyond beyond uh, the ones that you so saw. We will return. Where would you rank I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream in terms of your favorite works? Oh, I like my projects differently for different reasons. Uh, I would say, uh, I would say though, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, that came together very well, and I certainly enjoyed working with, with Harlan. And the original short story is my favorite short story of all time. <laughs> but still, I'd rank that beneath uh, uh, Heroes of Might and Magic 3. That was a pure pleasure to work on, and is certainly one of the one of the greatest games I ever made. Put uh, I've No Mouth uh, just below Heroes 3. Hibernation defrost sequence initiated. Estimated time to complete Earth terraforming, 300 years. Did you keep in contact with Harlan Ellison after I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream was completed? No, no, and I wish I had. The, the closest I came was at after shortly after his death, and uh, I attended uh, San Diego Comic Con, mm-hmm. and uh, and I, w- I was able to uh, uh, join other people in giving a, a short uh, testimonial to Harlan Ellison uh, with his uh, with his wife Susan present. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that 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 was the closest I ever came to. to getting into contact with Harlan after our experience together. This is not over. Well, unfortunately, it looks like that's all the time I have for this week. I really want to thank David Mullick for interviewing me and answering some of the questions that I've been wanting to know for years. Be sure to check in for part two in which I get to interview Bradley Shank and ask questions on how he came up with the art design for I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. Until next time, this is your host, Jake Melvin, signing off. <laughs>